In this video, I am going to take a little bike ride and we're going to talk about the results of the election. So I hope you enjoy this. Hey guys, this is Seth. Welcome back to my channel. And it is a beautiful, beautiful day here in Southern Germany. So on a Sunday, what better thing to do than to get your bike out and take a little bike ride. So I thought I would combine taking a bike ride with talking about the results of this past Tuesday's election in the United States. If you weren't aware, the U.S. had an election on last Tuesday, and really we just found out the results yesterday on Saturday. Um, I posted another video about how the U.S. election system works, and I'll link it up here in the top if you're kind of unfamiliar with how the system works. I also posted like a little one minute video yesterday when I found out that Joe Biden had won because I was ecstatic. But if you weren't aware, Joe Biden has won the U.S. elections and is what we call the president-elect of the United States. He will not take office until January 20th, 2021. So in the meantime, he picks his cabinet and gets ready to uh, assume power. Well, it shouldn't come as much of a shock that uh, President Donald J. Trump did not take this news well, and he's been throwing temper tantrums and Twitter tantrums and and all of that kind of thing, which if it weren't so serious, it would be hilarious. So, you know, I have several thoughts on this, on, on the results. First, I'm happy that Joe Biden won. Um, he received 74 million votes to Donald Trump's 70 million votes. He, so far, he's leading the election by about 4 million votes, which is roughly maybe a little bit more than Hillary Clinton won the popular vote by in 2016. So I am ecstatic about that. I'm less ecstatic and actually pretty saddened by the fact that 70 million people have seen what has happened in the, in the US in the past four years and how he has handled the pandemic and his racism and his nepotism and treason when, um, colluding with foreign powers to try to win this election. And they look at that and say, you know what, I'm okay with all that, as long as, you know, my team wins. And frankly, that bothers me. I really don't understand it. And, you know, I think the US is gonna have to do some serious soul searching when it comes to um, how we view our elections and how we view our politics. in the last video that in order to win the presidency, you don't necessarily have to have the most votes. You have to win the electoral college. And in order to win the electoral college, you have to have 270 votes in the electoral college in order to win it. The election vote-wise wasn't close. Biden is winning at this point by over 4 million votes. So it's not a real close election. It was pretty close for a while in the electoral college. There are a number of reasons for that as far as demographics go and rural versus urban areas, Democratic versus Republican areas. There's a lot to cover on that and I won't necessarily get into that today. But the reason it took so long to determine is that there were a ton of mail-in ballots this election cycle, way more than ever before because of the pandemic. On Tuesday when the voting ended, 
and the votes were being counted, you saw Trump jump out to an to a early lead and Biden caught up at the end. This is because, you know, for the last however long, five, six months, Trump has been saying, you know, that don't trust mail-in voting, go vote, yada, yada. And so overwhelmingly, the people who supported him went and physically voted in person on the day of election. It wasn't really even close. Way more people that supported Trump voted for him on the day of election. By like an 80% margin, people who mailed their vote in supported Joe Biden. So you saw Trump jump out to an early lead because of in-person voting, which was counted first in a lot of places. Biden caught up and eventually went ahead in a lot of places because of the mail-in balloting. So in several states, like Georgia, Pennsylvania, Nevada, Arizona, they were very too close to call for a long time because those mail-in ballots were still being counted. And when Pennsylvania got to the point where it was mathematically impossible for Donald Trump to get caught up, there weren't just weren't enough votes left, Pennsylvania was called for Joe Biden. So Joe Biden won Pennsylvania which put him over 270 votes and allowed him to win the election. I know news has been nonstop about this for about five days, but I just wanted to give a quick recap of you know, how we got here. So that's where we are as far as the presidential election goes. And uh, you know, I have some thoughts about this election and I wanna say what I thought was good about it and things that I'm disappointed in. What I thought was really good was you know, Joe Biden got the most votes of anyone in the history of our country, which is great. Donald Trump got the second most votes in the history of our country. Now, over, what, 144, 145 million people voted? Um, turnout was incredible. It's always a good thing when more people vote. An active citizenry is far better for a country than people who don't care. So that's a good thing. It's a good thing, in my opinion, that Joe Biden won, and we can start putting this sad period of our history in the rearview mirror, hopefully learn some lessons from it so it doesn't happen again. Perhaps start to listen to each other and, and not view each other as enemies. You know, we can have differing opinions and different philosophies on government and not be bad people. You know, conservatives can be good people, Democrats can, liberals can be good people. We can all be good people, and speak to each other and compromise and try and you know work together to make things better for people. So now a few things that I am disappointed about. As I've said before, I can't believe 70 million people voted for Donald Trump. They look at him, they look at what's happened over the last four years and they say, yeah, you know what, I'm okay with that. I don't understand it. I don't know if it's selfishness. I think part of it is selfishness. I think there's some racism, honestly. I think there's some bigotry, hatred, but I don't think it's just that. I think it's, it's a, you can't tell me what to do kind of thing. Like, I don't care what you think of this guy. I hitched my ride to him and I'm gonna stick with him. I think part of it's stubbornness, to be honest with you. I don't understand, I don't understand. But, you know, at the end of the day, here we are. Now, another thing I'm disappointed in is, as of today, the Senate stands at 48-48 with two seats in Georgia to be determined in January. That'll determine who controls the Senate. I think Alaska is still outstanding too, but I'm pretty sure the Republicans are gonna win Alaska. I was pretty shocked by that result. I thought the Democrats were gonna pick up four, maybe five seats, and that didn't happen. I thought for sure Susan Collins and Maine would lose and I don't know how she won, to be honest. I, I don't understand that at all. I was hoping Lindsey Graham would lose because he's the biggest Trump sycophant there is, but that didn't happen. You know, I guess we move on. I really, really wanted MJ Hager to win in Texas and that didn't happen. So I'm disappointed in that. I'm disappointed that the Senate didn't win.
now we have at least two years of divided government with the Democrats controlling the House and the presidency and the Republicans controlling the uh, Senate. So what do I want to see moving forward? You know, there's a real tendency, and, I, and Joe Biden is a person who is willing to work with both sides, and I'm okay with that. But I want people held accountable for misdeeds that happened under this Trump administration. I want people to be held accountable for their actions. I know when Obama was elected president, you know, he came in with a mandate, a far bigger mandate, and he wanted to heal the nation. So his administration didn't really pursue anyone who contributed to the, to the housing collapse or Iraq, Afghanistan. He didn't, he didn't want to pursue any of that. And I understand that. That to me, that's a political decision that kind of makes sense. I mean, I wish people had been held accountable for their actions. Maybe we wouldn't be here. But in light of, you know, where we were at the time, I get it. This, the things this administration does has done, I want a full investigation into Russia and the Ukraine interfering on behalf of Donald Trump that we didn't get with William Barr as AG. So I want a, a real AG in there who is not the president's personal attorney. I want these things investigated fully. Now, if, if nothing's there, then nothing's there. But I want that to happen. I want, I want it investigated, you know, how much money Donald Trump has stolen from us in the last four years and all the people who he, who's worked for him have stolen from us. I want to know those things. You know, I'm torn between that and wanting to, to, do, to pursue these people, but also knowing we need to reconcile and we need to stop viewing each other as enemies. I don't think it's mutually exclusive though. I think we can do both. And I think when Trump's, well, I, want to th I would like to think that when his crimes are fully investigated, that the people who have supported him have been like, wow, I was wrong, but I, I won't hold my breath for that happening. This has just been a few of my thoughts. Let me know in the comments what you think about the US election and how it went down and where you think we go from here. I'd love to have that discussion. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and click the like button. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel and make sure you click the bell icon so you'll get noticed when I post new videos. Until next time, guys, I will see you later.